Kato starting us off with a body body puffin and probably going to discover immediately that there's no access to that fourth Ralts. Now, yes. one interesting tidbit for Kato's list is that he is playing a copy of Tatsugiri, that uh, peculiar oh, wait, this uh, is our Tatsugiri. Pokemon. Yeah, this yeah. This is the showcase here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, how do you think that changes uh, in the Gardevoir deck here, Pablo? I, I mean, it's definitely going to help Kato potentially recover from Iono's in the late game. Yeah. Uh, which could be very good. Now, every time you use it, you will need to retreat it, right? And that will require an energy attachment, as I'm not seeing any sort of rescue board. Uh, so it's going to be useful. It also occupies a very valuable bench space, which is at a premium in these mirror matches because you want a lot of Kirlia. So yeah. we'll have to see if it does factor into this final match. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this all ends up here for both of our players. Still going through the deck here off of this Buddy Buddy Poppin. We're going to start to see these Ralts hit the bench here. 70 HP or less, that Buddy Buddy Poppin is feeding these little babies here on the bench. Yeah, Buddy Buddy, the Buddy Ralts showing up on the bench. That's, I think, Buddy Buddy Poppin really changed the name of the game. It, like, it slowed down the game a tad bit compared to Battle VIP Pass, but it also kept up the pace in a way. Like, it's a weird card, but <laughs> definitely very cool to have. It's mm -hmm. definitely very balanced. And we're just going to see a pass from Kato over to Natalie now. Well, I definitely would say it's the tastiest looking card that we have, for <laughs> sure. Natalie Miller starting off this first turn. Let's see how things uh, shake out here off of this nest ball. Natalie, of course, going to assess the deck here, what resources are available. You see all these shuffling of the Pokemon to the front of the deck. So Natalie knows exactly what she's dealing with as far as the Pokemon available to her. Now, I mean, just talking about Gardevoir itself as a deck, Pablo, we've seen the power of the energy acceleration through the Gardevoir EX's psychic embrace and the variety of attackers here as well. Of course, that new inclusion, not, well, I say not an attacker, but we did see the mind bend as well from that Monkey Dory in some matches too. But that Monkey Dory carrying so much weight, allowing each of these players to shift around damage counters from their field to their opponents. And you're causing your own damage on your field, of course, from that um, Psychic Embrace as well. So what are going to be the key cards for both of our players heading into this mirror match? And would you argue that either of these players lists are more valued going into a mirror match? I mean, that's a very good question. I am comparing the two lists right now and they even match the energies. I think they match in pretty much every aspect in terms of offensive options. Uh, Kato does run Klefki and Tatsugiri. Natalie does have the support of Radiant Greninja. Doesn't have that Klefki, but overall I'm seeing very similar options. So I think when something like that happens, yeah, it can come down to just setup, but yeah. also more importantly, the in-game decisions. Yeah, and speaking of setup, we just had that technical machine evolution get the first the two Kirlias mm -hmm. uh, set up right, which is really, really powerful, that immediately puts Natalie at an advantage because she can be the one to start going on the offensive next turn. Yeah, I love to see that, that technical machine evolution, such a powerful card. It discards at the end of your turn, but it allows you to use that evolution move to get these Curlia out. The next turn, you're going to be drawing into those cards with refinements. You're uh, available to evolve into a Gardevoir as well. So getting there first is huge. Nat Natalie Miller did go second here in this game versus Kato. And now we're going into Kato's deck. Over on the right side of our field here, we've used one refinement so far in this matchup. And now we're using this Earthen Vessel, discarding an Ultra Ball for a Dark Energy as well as a Psychic Energy. Yeah, now it might be Monkey Dory that ends up doing uh, the Technical Machine Evolution here off of this. Arvin, we could see that. The Puffin get Triple Curlia going, but if Natalie's able to capitalize on that and KO this Monkey Dory, I mean, there's always Suprat to get it back, but yeah. having that little bit of extra cheeky damage to send over to your opponent's side, I think that could be 
something similar to what we saw when Stefan defeated Andrew Kennett. It was that slow yeah. build up of the damage from Monkey Dury that ended up being the difference. And that could factor in here as one single price taken by Monkey Dury eventually. That could be what decides this game. Yeah, who's better at math here? That's, that's going to be <laughs> a big factor here for that Monkey Dory damage and where it's going to be placed throughout this match. Well, as we see that energy being placed onto the Monkey Dory um, as well as the technical machine. So we're seeing back-to-back -back plays here, as I expect from this Guard of Armier, but that technical machine is what's going to allow these Curlia to come out of the deck onto the field here for Kato as well. Just one pace behind uh, because Kato did go first. So you have to uh, wait here to attack if you're going first. You can't attack on your first turn um, unless you're going second. So now we have three of these Curlia out on the bench here. That's going to end the turn for Kato. And we're back over onto Natalie's side of the field. Now, Natalie can go in the offensive, but her hand is actually not great at all. There's no psychic energy right now in the discard pile. Did find an Arvin, which could potentially find the Earthen Vessel, but now has no way to discard those psychics. So even though she could have gone on the offensive, there's actually no way to do that at this point in time. Yeah, that is unfortunate to see here. We saw two refinements from Natalie to draw into some extra cards, but yeah, we have to get into these energy and there's none currently in the discard pile. Arvin, of course, gonna get us a tool card and an item card or just one, I guess, <laughs> it's your choice here. Yeah, Arvin gonna be able to get us a stronger setup. Natalie not able to capitalize on the fact that she got to evolve first into those gear lists, had them ready to go, but the lack of psychic energies in the discard pile is what caught you. And I mean, you're not expected to have every psychic energy available to you immediately in the yes, early game. Yeah. And uh, however, on the other side, Kato does have already some psychic energies in hand, some in the discard pile. So we could see Kato become the first player to take a prize card in this top eight match. Absolutely. Let's talk about the A specs for both of these players. Both of them have that unfair stamp as well so that's a factor in this matchup here if uh and yeah neither of them had it in the prize cards well this uh buddy buddy poppin bringing out manaphy onto the bench as well as that ralts the buddy buddy was sought out from that arvin as well as that bravery charm going into natalie's hands Yep, and now we see a pass over to Kato. We'll start with that refinement. And it always feels amazing to have triple <laughs> Kyrlia. You know you're getting so nice. at least six extra cards. Now, the mana fee from Natalie does protect from any sort of uh, screamtail offensive yeah. pressure from Kato. But there is a possibility to use Cresselia. And that would not care that there's a mana fee on the bench. As Cresselia does place damage counters with its Moonglow reverse attack, so that could be how Kato decides to go after some of those very valuable Kirlias in Natalie's bench. Yeah, I feel like we haven't gotten to see Cresselia at all in our no. matches that we've cast of Pablo, so maybe we'll finally get to see some Cresselia action here from both of our players. Gardevoir EX going to be evolved into now here for Kato. Of course, after that refinement happens, we're hopping into a second refinement here. We just have to find that discard for Kato before um, drawing. Or wait, are we already through these both? Was that just a rotation? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah it must I'm, be. I'm, uh, yeah, I imagine it was the two yeah. psychics and the body body puffin. Must so. have been while we were on the hand yeah. cam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've already the... drawn all <laughs> of those refinement cards. Of course, the one, uh, the one Curlia that was evolved into refined as well. So now we're getting that energy placed onto this monkey Dory. Yeah, and more importantly, the damage, which yes. can't be used or can't be sent over to Natalie's side right now as the Flutter Main does block the ability at this point in time that cannot happen until the uh, Monkey Dory retreat, but actually it's Monkey Dory that's going to be I was about to say, are we about to see oh, the no. mind vent? Okay, so Flutter Main does prevent Monkey Dory from using its ability. <gasps> I think Natalie thought that Monkey Dory was attacking with that mind bend attack, oh, okay. so just making sure. Yeah, I mean, that Monkey Dory just needs to retreat and then it can use its ability. This could open up yeah. a potential misplay if Kato decided 
or try to attack with Gardevoir, he needs to power up the Gardevoir first because he, if he promoted the oh, Gardevoir true. and then tried to load up, that Psychic Embrace would actually not be possible to use. So even the Flutter main could have some use, but yeah. It's just going to be a mind bit 60 and confused. The confusion, yes. Very let's not peculiar decision. About that confusion as well. 60 damage from the mind bend. And now we see the confusion. Over to Natalie's side of the field here. Mm -hmm. That first refinement discarding that Radiant Greninja to it, as well as the Psychic Energy stacking those up into the discard pile now here for Natalie. Drawing into an Iono as well as another Psychic Energy for Natalie Miller. I think Kato might have overlooked a little bit uh, the fact that he would have no abilities in the active and then couldn't have uh, powered up the card of War to take a knockout. So now this opens up the possibility for Natalie not only to start being aggressive, right? We were seeing very similar setups. One Guardi, double Kirlia, uh, no monkey for Natalie just yet. But if she knocks out her opponent's Monkey Dury with Gardevoir EX, that's one resource you deny. However, you do expose the Gardevoir to a possible retaliation with the Drifflin. So a lot of things happening here. And this could have been a small bait by Kato. It could have been a misplay. I'm not sure what was running through his mind when he decided to attack with his Monkey Dury. Well, I guess we'll see how it pans out for Kato in this matchup here as Natalie continues to turn through the deck here. Earthen Vessel being played, discarding another Psychic Energy into the discard pile here to be able to charge up these uh, future attackers. And then, of course, searching out those other uh, Psychic Energies with that Earthen Vessel as well. So thinning the deck out, having those Psychic Energies in your hand to be able to discard them and uh, have them there, which is exactly where you want them for the Psychic Embrace. It's perfectly uh, what Natalie needs to be doing here. I just want to say, too, Natalie Miller has played Gardevoir for a very long time, I believe. <laughs> so uh, I completely trust in the plays here from Natalie. Fantastic player um, herself at this game, but especially with Gardevoir. I would say one of the resident experts of Australia, indeed. Yeah, for sure, Natalie, a very experienced player, very experienced Gardevoir player as yeah. well. And we'll have to see how she plans out this turn, that Flutter main ability preventing Monkey Dory from using its own, potentially denying the attack for Kato will allow her to go on the offensive. But the only attacker she has that can take a knockout potentially right now could be that uh, Gardevoir. No, it's now the Cresselia. We're going to see the Cresselia make something happen here. Does Natalie have six, uh, three energy? Sorry, she does. So she's going to spread those damage counters and going to transfer them over to one of these two Curlias. Yeah, exactly. Moon Glow Reverse is the move here on this Cresselli. It allows you to transfer two damage counters from each of your Pokemon onto one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's going to take the knockout there. First prize card down here for Natalie Miller, taking the lead in the prize cards. Did go second in this first game between our players as well. Now we're back over to Kato here, starting with this Earthen Vessel, discarding an energy here. We're going to see a lot of the same plays from these players. Of course, they're playing the same deck. So a lot of the same cards, the same strategy as far as getting these psychic energies into the discard pile to be able to accelerate them onto your field with that psychic embrace. You're taking that damage, but the damage is only being taken for you to manipulate it in whatever way you want. All of your attackers are pretty low HP here, but as long as you're taking those knockouts on pace back to back each turn, then you're off to the races to get your prize cards and win your game. So. We're going to have to see how the disruption in the future of these turns plays out for both of these players. Because if your board state's not set up in the best way, Pablo, one of these players could be looking to have quite a rough time. But what do you think about this counter catcher here now that Kato is behind in prize cards? I love it. I think if you're going behind in the Kirli account, you need to also make sure you're taking down your opponent's Kirli's as well. Now, the Manafi prevents Screamtail from happening, but one cool thing about Cresselia is that you get to Moonglo Reverse and get rid of damage, but that's actually not so great anymore because there's no more um, Shining Arcana Gardevoir. That is no longer a possibility uh, to use for Gardevoir. It did rotate out, so some of these energies 
could get stuck at yes, some point and true. they might not be able to be utilized to power up a drift lunar or not so that's something that we're gonna have to be on the lookout for now kato also looking for a potential attacker does want the um monkey Tori available i think fluttermane is gonna be the best target allows him to place two damage counters with its attack allows him to transfer two damage counters from Monkey Dury to somewhere else and does just enough to knock out this ADHP Kirlia. So Fluttermane ended up being one of the stars in this match, both for Natalie and Kato in yeah, this early in game. Ways and too. I generally did not expect this. <laughs> exactly. Uh, utilizing both the Midnight Fluttering ability to cause a little bit of disruption to Kato's board in those uh, earlier turns. But now um, that's going to allow Kato to do exactly as you said, the Hex Curl. Or sorry, Hex Hurl move <laughs> here <laughs> on the Flutter main deals 90, but it allows you to also place two damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon. And that's when I was saying uh, a lot of a lot of the uh, math comes into play here because we're going to see a lot of damage counters in both of these board states being. Uh, moved around by the Monkey Dory, being dealt by our own players to their own Pokemon, shifted with the Cresselia, with the Moonglow Reverse, and that those damage counters are going to make a huge difference here. But only 90 with the Hex Curl, but that's going to take the knockout on that small little Curlia. And that's a prize card down now for Kato. Back and forth here. Neither of our players can miss a turn as far as attacks go. Did you see Natalie top deck one of her special tech cards, that technical machine devolution. So she's Whoa. relying on these technical machines so much that could come into play. And that's not a card you would normally expect in Gardevoir anymore. So that could catch Kato by surprise at a certain point. Now, I loved what Kato did to stack up the damage on this Mistrevious. That's like the one Pokemon uh, you, your opponent is the least likely to Professor Turo. They can't evolve it either. So eventually, either you get the knockout or you make them use up a useless resource to pick up a very useless card. That's something I saw a lot heading into this event. People trying to get cheeky extra KOs on Ralts or extra KOs on Curlias, but then their opponents eventually picking them up with Turo or evolving them and putting them out of range. Absolutely, that's a really good uh, play there from Kato that you're talking about. I mean, it's just super cool how all of these um, intricate plays are made with our players, but this Hisuian Heavy Ball is going to go down into the discard pile off of this refinement Curlia here for Natalie Miller. Now it seems like Natalie's just going to stick to her plan of making sure that Kato has very little access, knocking out that Curlia, and I think that's why Kato benched this Tatsugiri to have some sort of uh, recovery and um, consistency because otherwise, no more Curlias, no more refinements, and that could prove to be costly. Still having those two energy in the prize cards as well as that Iono for Natalie Miller. Uh, speaking of Ionos, we're going to see Kato's Iono here in this match for this turn. Both of these players are going to draw into some new cards. Natalie's only going to get four representing those four prize cards left. Whereas Kato's going to get five here to the hands. Yep, a very nice amount. But with no more Ralts, with no more Kirlia, one Ralts is still locked in the prize cards. And Kato did have the Drifloon plus the Bravery Charm that is now at the bottom. Uh, can still refine the Drifloon. Ooh. Does have his own Cresselia indeed to try and snipe that Kirlia himself. Or he could just attack the Cresselia and keep piling up the damage on the Fluttermane. We'll have to see what he ends up doing. It seems like he will go for that Moonglow reverse attack, just like Natalie. Both players recognizing the importance yeah. of denying your opponents Kirlia. But Natalie does have the Ralts advantage, and that Ralts is going to become Kirlia once more. <laughs> yes, exactly. Those basic babies turning into their evolved forms, and Kirlia being one of those for this match. But the damage is being placed onto the field here now from uh, Kato with the Psychic Embrace. Two damage counters being dealt for each Psychic Energy accelerated here. Moon Glow Reverse is going to shift those damage counters onto Natalie's field now. And it's actually going to be the uh, some of them going onto this Flutter main. Oh, no. Yeah, for, first she used Monkey Dory's ability to place one damage oh, counter on Monkey Dory okay. and then 
uh, Kato used Moonglow Reverse to knock out the Kirlia by transferring the remaining eight. So, so we're taking up there. And, yeah, okay. Makes yeah, sense. that's one important aspect of Monkey Dury. It's up to three. So you can transfer one, two, or three damage yes. counters. And Kato making sure Love that it. even that damage counter counts and trying to get that extra prize advantage by going after the Flutter main eventually. Now, it's important to note that Natalie doesn't have Monkey Dury herself. So Monkey Dury could, as usual, be the hero in this match and could prove the difference for Kato to win this game. Yeah, only one Monkey Dory in the list on Natalie's side, whereas Kato actually plays two Monkey Dory, right? Yeah, two Monkey Dory in yep. the list for Kato as well. But such a cool card to see. I mean, both the Moonglow reverse as well as that Monkey Dory. We went from all those damage counters on the board seat for Kato, now being wiped over to Natalie's field, taking out that Curlia. Flutter main is getting more uh, weaker as the turns go by. Now we're over back to Natalie's side of the field here as we're shuffling up the deck after the Super Rod. Now this Ooh, is, a, yeah, Artisan, a very nice uh, card to play. I think I would have liked to see Natalie use it before this Iono just to get the Ralts that she just put back so that you don't draw it and then find a different card. I mean, unless she wants to keep that bench space open for a potential Screamtail like she just got. So yeah. keeping the options open. Um, now, as Gardevoir, usually you want to be just a little behind, right? So your counter catchers work, because otherwise, not only currently has the initiative, but she also doesn't get to cost very many things. Whereas Kato has enjoyed the benefit of the counter catcher. However, who needs to cost <laughs> Boo when you have Screamtail to just exactly. target down your opponent's bench? Exactly. Screamtail, another MVP attacker from this deck here. All of these damage counters being placed from the Psychic Embrace. Two each for every energy that's going to allow Natalie to do this roaring scream attack. 20 damage to one of your opponent's uh, benched Pokemon for each damage counter here. So it deals all across the field, not just to the active here. That's going to be another prize card gone down for Natalie Miller in this game one between our players. Three prize cards left to take here versus Kato sitting at four prize cards. Fluttermane on the bench with a couple of energies. Monkey Dory with a couple of energies. Gardevoir uh, EX as well. And that's Cresselia in the active position. But not a single uh, Ralts out there yet, Pablo. Yeah, Kato, not a lot of support. Did just get the Tatsugiri KO, so not only recognizing that. that it's going to be hard for Kato to have a follow-up. This on first stamp will come in handy, and Kato had, has a really cool play possibly lined up, but he might be an energy short. He could counter catcher the Curlia, retreat, and then bring up the uh, Flutter main take down the Curlia, place two damage counters, and then transfer three with Monkey Dory, but he might be one damage counter short because he has two energies locked up in the prize cards. Or no, there's two energies here. Never mind, he can do this. He can eliminate the Curlia and eliminate the Screamtail this turn, all thanks to Monkey Dory. Oh my gosh. I mean, I knew Monkey Dory was going to come into play in a huge way here, but I mean, it is carrying so much weight. I feel like uh, I feel like it almost. I don't know. I guess you could argue, Psychic Embrace is kind of the uh, the backbone of the deck as well. But that Monkey Dory is just so proving to have so much utility in this deck. This unfair stamp as well. We're gonna get to stamp in here, Pablo, and it's looking like the red stamp for Natalie Miller's side. Of course, only being able to draw two cards, whereas Kato is gonna get five to the hands. As long as there is a Pokemon knocked out on your last turn. Yeah, now, as I was saying, that counter catcher, boo, that's so I essential. Know. That's the one advantage that Kato has right now. Natalie has been ahead in the price count, so hasn't been able to ghost. But Kato on the other side has played both counter catchers and will get so much value out of this one. Going to be able to take down the Kirli and possibly take down the screen tail as well whilst having the flutter main ready to go and ready to be taken down as well so we could see kato potentially win within the next two turns yeah this is huge here for kato and taking a game here um i mean honestly this has gone faster than i would have uh, expected here yeah Pablo. for sure <laughs> for it's really been back and forth exactly right? yeah both of these players know exactly what they're doing here kato still working through this turn as of now, uh, placing this energy down onto the Flutter main. Now, 
going to take those damage counters, but then move them right away yep. with that Monkey Dory Adrenaline Brain ability, knocking out that Screamtail, knocking out the active Pokemon, taking two prize cards now. Only two oh. prize. Natalie drew before promoting. Oh no. No. Oh. It's very clear which card it is. It's <sighs> non consequential. Uh, should be an easy fix. It, it really has no effect on who she was going to promote. She wants to unlock the energy from the Flutter main, but it is a miss sequence. Seems like she's going to give up on this game. I mean, it was looking really rough. She did find an Iono off of the unfirst stamp, so wow. she could have uh, maybe made something happen, but it wasn't looking great. And she Alts there for Kato once again, Curlia there for Natalie, as well as a Screamtail on Kato's side of the prize cards, too. A couple of Pokemon here. This time around, we're going to be starting with Natalie Miller going first. Natalie was going second in the last game, and that did give a little bit of an edge as far as the technical machine that we saw being used first to get in those Curlia. Uh, There's a lot of setup there that Natalie was able to get to the first prize card of the game as well. But Kato now is up a game here in our Masters Top 8 featured match. And Natalie's going to make sure to take a look at everything in the deck, take note of these prize cards, and keep it churning it through here. That Earthen Vessel searching out these two energy to start. We'll have to see where the rest of this hand goes. Monkey Dory out on the field as the active uh, Pokemon, but it's actually the Klefki there for Kato. What do you think about that, Pablo? Yeah, I mean, Klefki, a much harsher lock against a lot of decks. It doesn't just stop the active Pokemon, it stops every basic Pokemon's ability, no matter where they are. So I'm sure that came in very useful for Kato. It stops Quackability, it stops Rotom, yes. it stops Luminion, it stops yeah. Greninja, it stops everyone. Even Monkey Dory gets stopped. So no Adrenaline Brain, at least in the foreseeable future. And very underwhelming start for Natalie. Oh. Not a single route getting played down, boo. I know, and going first as well. That means Kato is going second, allowed to play that supporter card in that Arvin, get even more set up going into this game too. It could be slipping away here for Natalie, but I have seen tons of comebacks on our stream before, casted lots of comeback matches, I believe here in Natalie Miller, but Kato standing in the way here in our Masters Top 8. We're gonna have to see how this goes. Of course, searching the deck, keeping track of all of these prize cards as well. We have a couple of updates on our games, if you wanna get into that, Pablo. I know that uh, Andrew Gantner is gonna go up a game against Stefan, so that's one of our Lost Box players going up a game. Uh, in, out in our field. Yeah, that's very interesting to see. We might actually get to see more than just Cardiff Mirror matches at this North yes. America <laughs> International oh, Championship. Oh, and Andrew Hedrick, our other Lost Box player, yep. also up a game. So both of our Lost Box players succeeding so far out in our fields. Unfortunately, we only get to stream one of our top eight matches. Otherwise, we'd be here all night, Pablo. <laughs> so uh, coming back to this top eight match here on our stream, still in the deck for Kato off this Arvin. It's going to be the Buddy Buddy Poffin as well as that technical machine coming out of the deck here. Buddy Buddy Poffin gonna be played straight away to start getting these Ralts out onto the field for Kato. Yeah, this is a very bad situation for Natalie. Staring down double Kirlia when you have zero Ralts in play in the mirror match, that's not ever a good thing. Possibly triple Ralts here off of this nest ball. We do know that one is priced, but that's okay when your opponent has zero. You have a exactly. three Ralts advantage at this point. This hurts to see so much. I mean, as we said so much in our game one between these players, every single turn matters. Let's see what the top deck is for Natalie, but I'm going to say she's she's not looking thrilled here. Um, or sorry, the... Yeah, okay, that was the top deck there for Natalie after that technical machine. We're still shuffling up here on Kato's side of the field, but ending with those Curlia in play now for Kato. That's what Kato wants to see on this side. Let's see if Natalie has any sort of play with this turn. It's going to be an Ultra Ball discarding one of those Gardevoir EX um, to it, as well as a Psychic Energy, and that's going to get us our first Ralts here, but this is Natalie's second turn now. Monkey Dory doesn't even work at this point, but hey, you know what it does work for? It can do a technical machine. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm gonna get at least one Kirlia out. Extremely yeah. vulnerable though, potentially could go down to a yeah, Scream Tail, tough. could go down to a Cresselia even. So not the best start here for Natalie. She needs to hope that Kato has a very underwhelming turn, but Refinement's gonna guarantee at least two extra cards. Probably relieved that there wasn't an energy there, but Kato does find the Arvin, which could find either the Ultra Wolf for the Guard of REX or the Earthen Vessel, if he still has another one available. Well, we're which he does. Yeah, he plays three Earthen Vessels. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot there. Valuable card in Kato's deck, Oof. I'm sure, but it's going to be a second refinement here. There's the Ultra Ball. Tatsugiri being eyed up for this uh, Ultra Ball here. I mean, Kato taking his time. I think it's pretty straightforward. You go Arvin, Earthen Vessel, you get your Guard of War, you get your energies, and you're good to go to potentially take down that Kirli. I think he's missing the Screamtail, but even going on the offensive with your Gardevoir EX yeah. seems pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're looking at this board states, but I guess Kato's going to take his time here, decide what he wants to do. Looks like Ion down that Arvin now. Pablo, we'll see what the cards are drawn here and if it's going to be exactly what you said. One of those Earthen Vessel, it was at the bottom of the deck, so now it's right on top here. The other one being eyed up as well from Kato, so... Looks like that's what we're going to be getting into. Of course, Arvin does allow you to grab a tool card as well as that item card. So we're going to see dual cards come out here. And that's easy fodder if it's a tool that you don't need to use anymore for your refinements in the future. Or one of those bravery charm as well. Yeah. Bravery charm to help increase your basic Pokemon's HP, which is very crucial for Garvor. Not as crucial in this match yeah. particularly, but overall it's how you can one kill big Pokemon out there. Now, very, very good start here for Kato. He will now be able to Earthen Vessel for two energies and discard them with Ultra Ball if he wants to, or, or just one that's fine, has one to retreat from the active and will be able to go on the offensive. Is just making sure that the, what the risk is at doing this, because not only will have one purely available, yeah. can go into Gardevoir. There is a universe perhaps where Natalie responds to this Recovers with a Drifloon, one hit KO on that Gardevoir EX, but I have to figure your odds are very good that that doesn't happen and Kato could be building a very big advantage in this game too. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see where it goes, Pablo, but Ultra Ball going to discard these two Psychic Energy. We need them in the discard pile. I believe Kato puts them off to the side so you can see them on, on your screen, Pablo, <laughs> but we can't see them here on this screen once they go off to the side. But that Ultra Ball is going to get the Gardevoir EX here. It's going to be evolved into from Kato, taking all of his time here to, to map out these plays. But, I mean, just if you're tuning in right now, just looking at these board states, Kato being up a game as well. It's definitely looking tough here, but not for Kato. <laughs> yeah, definitely not for Kato now. That bench of the Flutter main might indicate that he's just going to go in with that. That wouldn't knock out neither the Monkey Dory nor the Kirla. So really deciding whether mm. he wants to go on the offensive with the Gardevoir, maybe the Flutter main. If you're going to go with the Gardevoir, I feel like you shouldn't be benching that Flutter main yeah. preemptively. Locks you out of options for Scream Tour or whatnot in the future. But Kato going to go all cylinders on the offensive. Goodbye, Monkey Tour. Single prize, uh, single Pokemon in play for Natalie. And a very underwhelming hand. So this refinement of this Curlia is going to have to be huge. Huge indeed. And also we have the top deck from Natalie that could potentially help out a bit here. But Kato can accelerate these energy two damage counters for each energy going down uh, onto that guard of our EX thanks to that psychic embrace ability. We're going to see the top deck in where we already saw the top deck right. uh, into the refinement heavy ball going down. What did we get here? A nest ball? Yeah, nest ball and ultra ball. So we get to keep playing. Ask Natalie, yes. right? We get to still do things. Maybe if there's enough energy in the discard pile, I haven't been keeping track. Maybe we can get a response 190 damage onto this Gardevoir with our own Gardevoir, maybe. But other than that, it's not looking great. And now, pardon me, uh, Kato is not bench locked. He still has a, a space right there, which he can use. But Natalie's just going to evolve, protect the Curlia, and going to be a pass. Pass back over to Kato here. We have a lot of uh, energy on the board here right now. Those three on Garvar EX. 
earthen vessel is going to be searching out even more of these energy. Yep. Discarding that bravery charm that's not super needed here in this matchup. Now, two psychic energy going to be going to Kato's hand here. Looks like we already refined, unless that uh, card just rotated still from Kato. Oh, yeah. Now we're refining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> refine, refine. Discard a card, draw two. I think did find that. Oh, no, it's Cresselia. I thought it was a Monkey Dory. Oh, you yeah. could use Cresselia this turn to snipe this Ralts. Like, you know Natalie's hand is really bad. And as long as you knock out that Ralts, not only do you continue your win condition, but also you deny any potential Kirlia from Natalie. So Kato just drawing everything they need. Could also just go get the Monkey Dory, attach the Darkness Energy, and start dishing the damage onto this Gardevoir. But I feel like this... This Flutter main might have been a slight oversight by Kato. If he could use Cresselia and Monkey Dory this turn, that would be insane. That would be insane indeed, but there's no more bench space, unfortunately. Once that Monkey Dory does come down here for Kato, being sought after um, off of that Ultra Ball for Kato and the dark energy that was pulled out of the deck from that Earthen Vessel now being attached, unlocking that Adrena Brain ability here, allowing Kato to shift those damage counters onto Natalie's board, up to three damage counters. Of course. Yeah. I really like the possibility here for Kato. If he ends up promoting the Flutter main to the active spot, that will deny Gardevoir EX's Psychic Embrace ability, meaning it'll probably get stuck there. It will allow Kato to start building up damage onto the bench whilst damaging the active, putting it in range of perhaps a Gardevoir EX return KO next turn. So slow but sure, I think Kato uh, sees the opportunity, but uh, he has a big advantage. As long as he maintains that, that's going to be the key here. Yes, exactly, Pablo. We're seeing that those damage counters go down onto Natalie's field here now. And that Gardevoir EX going to use uh, Miracle Force. Wow, we haven't really said that one too often. Huh? No, no. <laughs> it's not too common that a Gardevoir EX ends up being the star and the yeah. attacker. 190 damage there. Natalie Miller over here on this side of the field does have the Curlia to evolve into. Going to have to discard for it. Boss's orders going to be that discard here for Natalie. What can we draw Oof. into? Radiant Greninja and a Psychic Energy, but... I mean, oh, it's yeah, two I mean, extra cards, it right? It is. That's true. Radiant Greninja hitting the bench here. Oof. Psychic Energy going down. It's the counter catcher as well as... What was the other card, Pablo? Uh, I think it was uh, something inconsequential. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I mean... I, I couldn't tell, but it was just not oh, great. It's oh, it's Ultra an Ultra Ball. Ball. All right. Yeah, okay. Ultra Ball discarding a, a Curlia now on uh, and a counter catcher as well, grabbing that Cresselia out and putting it straight down onto this field. Yeah, this will allow with, with the energies that we have, this, I think, will allow Natalie to potentially take a prize on this Curlia, which is good news for her, right? Yeah. Um, but going to allow her to keep a little bit with the price rate. We'll also put more damage on the Gardevoir, putting it in range of the Monkey Dory. Really limits the energy that she has available, but Natalie knows this is game two. I cannot Ooh. give up on this position. I have to try my best to really make something happen. Exactly, and I mean, Natalie is hanging on here. She's making these plays. Moon Glow Reverse going to take out that Curlia there, and that's a prize card for Natalie. So technically, yeah. our players are tied here now in prize cards. That mean that means nobody's counter catcher is activated at this point in time, <laughs> Pablo. You do have to be behind in prize cards to use that. But a Cresselia of his own, Kato is going to bring that down onto the bench here. Retreat off that two retreat cost Gardevoir EX into the Cresselia now. Yeah, but we're going to see that knockout on the Curlia this time around. Uh, I really would have liked to see that the previous turn, though. Take down the Ralts that Curlia definitely gave a lot of room to do things for Natalie. But once again, she's going to be down to top deck mode. We need this card to be huge for Natalie here. Probably only Iono or uh, on first stamp are generally good. Well, I guess Arvin can search for on first stamp. So there yeah. are options, but they're still very limited. Yep. 40 damage now on that Curlia. Kato, of course, 40 damage over on the field. 
spread out among those Pokemon here. Moonflow Reverse going to move those two damage counters off the Fluttermane, off of that Cresselia, knocking out that Curlia on Oof. Natalie Miller's side. Another prize card down top deck for Natalie Miller. We, uh, what was it? The energy. It was the energy for Greninja, and now she just found an Iono off of those two cards from the concealed card. So wow. she will be able to make something happen. An Intense Hammer as well, not the best card. Seems like we're going to see an aggressive Flutter main as a response, but the Iono will give her finally a fresh <laughs> set cards. of five cards. Yeah, I feel like we have been hurting so bad for cards here on Natalie Miller's side of the field, but Iono at least is going to net us a couple. Kato going to get four prize cards, or four cards based off those prize cards. Natalie going to have five at the ready here. Looks like we got um, that dark energy there. I think I saw a nest ball yeah. in his hand as well. Scream tail, earthen vessel, and a bravery charm as those five cards. Yeah, scream tail could be used this turn to potentially take down their vaults now. Uh, seems like that might be the choice, though. Are there enough energies? I think there are. Yeah, there's exactly two. That's good enough yeah so slowly but surely natalie making strides in this game trying to yeah. she's able to at least keep up with the price cards and setup wise neither player has curlia so neither player really having a good time in terms of thinning deck drawing cards finding resources yeah, that is huge. Nest Ball now for Natalie Miller going back into the deck here, grabbing another one of these Ralts to reestablish the bench here. Keep some stabilization. But honestly, Pablo, for how it was looking throughout the first couple of turns here, Natalie has definitely recovered in a major way. We have the Scream Tail now with the Bravery Charm attached to Psychic Energy for damage counters there. And that's uh, what Natalie needs to take a knockout there on Kato's board going down another prize card for for each of our players here where do you see this going from here pablo as far as kato's turn the back and forth what's the board state looking like how can kato uh, manipulate all those damage counters that are happening on natalie's side of the field to take these prize cards i mean with no access to counter catcher even though this card of war is heavily damaged it is also pretty safe on the bench uh, at this point in time, and Kiduri is good, but it's not uh, 30 damage counters good, you know. So yeah. slowly but surely you can whittle that down, but then Chris Hilla can send some of those uh, damage counters back. Uh, Kato with no Ralts on the board. His energies are spread out. Only has two energies right here in the discard pile. So Cresselia, not even a very powerful threat. Could go for the second attack. Lunar Blast, I believe, doing 110 and potentially getting the knockout on this scream tail that way so that is one option that's true that kato has whilst transferring three damage counters somewhere but it's definitely a lot closer than it was initially looking like after natalie had very underwhelming uh early game exactly so ever underwhelming but holding on here in this game two between our players. Kato gonna use that super rod now to uh, shuffle up those Pokemon back into the deck. Yeah, super rod gonna recover some of the resources. Really would love to have the backup of Curlia. And yeah, Kato just has every imaginable Pokemon, but not quite the ones that he would like. And especially that Klefki, that Klefki has not served any single yeah, purpose actually. at this point in time. It <laughs> well, was just stopped, a starter. Stop the monkey dory, I guess. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it wasn't even doing anything, so. <laughs> well, Kato's going to grab that Ralts back out of the deck here. Now place it down onto the field. Now, Kato knows that if he knocks out the Screamtail, Cresselia comes up and takes down the Ralts. If Kato doesn't KO the Screamtail, then the Screamtail Chaos the Ralts, so then Ralts is generally uh, doomed at this point in time. Now, it seems like it's going to be the Flutter ah, main just okay. to make sure that we pile up more damage. Seems like a more true. efficient way to do uh, the attack over the Lunar Blast. You can transfer these three damage counters probably over to the Gardevoir. There we go. Kato very nicely following the arrow that I drew for him. And <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see the knockout. And yep. now this opens up the possibility for a potential... Uh, misplay of sorts if Natalie ends up promoting the Gardevoir EX for some reason Fluttermane would be denying its ability with Midnight Fluttering but I doubt Natalie will make that mistake 
Yeah, I feel like we're also not going to see that as well, potentially here, Pablo. It's like we're... Oh, it's not a KO. That's I was about nice. to say, because the bravery charm, bravery charm. Yeah, I think that HP off. is... Yeah, well, it's, it's 90 90? plus 50, 140, oh, wow. and there's 130. So there's actually no KO this time around. And all of a sudden, that Screamtail has 13 damage counters oh my on gosh. it. It can do 260 damage anywhere it wants. Not quite enough to knock out the Carnivore yeah. yet, but it could set it up to where eventually with Monkey Dory or with a follow-up Cresselia, you can take it down. Yeah, actually, that's pretty pretty wild to see. But that Screamtail, it's gotten a lot uh, more dangerous here with those damage counters being placed down onto it thanks to Kato's uh, Fluttermane there. Earthen Vessel discarding that Artisan on Natalie's side to get these Psychic Energy out. Yeah, so maybe a, a little miscalculation there by Kato being 10 off the damage. Could have been intentional, but... Yeah, could I, it could have been. I mean, been. which would allow you to perhaps fall down in the prizes and then you get to use counter catcher exactly. but yeah. i can't really fathom where you would benefit from that instead of eliminating an attacker from natalie taking down the option for her to take another prize card and we'll have to see how this ends up developing we could see a counter catcher play bring up the card of war putting the two damage counters here and then all of a sudden you get a three price turn that is yeah, also another possibility that would be huge to see. I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt it from all of these damage counters have been placed. Like, I wouldn't doubt the potential of that from these decks, but still, you love to see multi-prize card turns every time they happen. Screamtail going to eliminate that Monkey Dory off of the field here for Kato. Natalie Miller now leading in the prize race. Three prize cards left to take. Refinement going to start us off discarding this additional Psychic Energy, drawing into his Super Rod and that Tatsugiri. And that was actually huge. With that knockout, Natalie prevents the Monkey Dory from pushing damage onto the Screamtail to get a mid-turn KO, and then you're able yeah. to attack to get a follow-up KO. That was really well done by Natalie. Of course, that does mean that Kato now has access to a Curlia, and if you're getting Iono'd and you don't have a Curlia set up like Natalie doesn't at this point in time, that could be problematic. We're going to see the Darkness Energy go back into the deck with Triple Earth and Vessel and the Monkey Dory in hand. That double monkey dory could still uh, help Kato pull this play off, but That's Natalie true. tried her best to make sure it was denied. Exactly. Natalie doing absolutely everything possible here, but Kato shuffling that uh, Pokemon back into the deck on this side of the field. Now, Gardevoir has 260 damage on it, so if monkey dory does find that darkness energy, Kato could actually. Uh, just attack and knock out both of these Pokemon as long as he can get two more damage counters on the board to transfer them and there's energy here. So yeah. can Kato find the Darkness energy to get a three price turn? He does. It's there. The Iono here. Kato drawing into four cards. Natalie three, but that dark energy is found. Placed down onto this Monkey Dory. One of the reasons it fits so well into here because Psychic Embrace is accelerating all of your Psychic energy. So you have that energy attachment for the turn here now onto that Monkey Dory available to you. And that Monkey there Dory was knocked out. Now it's back. We're ticking up here, and Kato uh, has the energy here as well for this Fluttermane to yep. shift those uh, damage counters on it with the Monkey Dory onto that Gardevoir. And that's going to be the turn we were talking about, Pablo. A triple prize card turn here for Kato Ari in this matchup. Already up a game, back over to Natalie's side, but that is huge, Pablo. That is huge. Natalie against the ropes. No Gardevoir, no Curlia even available. Can attach energy to the Fluttermain to do 90 damage, but that's not going to get her anywhere near close to winning. And Kato can't quite win the game just yet because of that Fluttermain preventing the Gardevoir from getting promoted and powered up. But so close, Kato one prize card away from victory and advancing to the top four. Yeah, here at NAIC, this is huge here, Pablo. It's all coming down to this. We're going to see an Iono of Natalie's own over here. Three cards this time. And Kato, only having one prize card left, is going to have a single card here off of this draw. Let's see what Natalie gets here for the turn. That Curlia instantly refining that Arvin into the discard pile here. 
Yeah, now did find her a spec as well, but I would actually give Kato an extra card than he could. Yeah, that's has. true. <laughs> Counter catch hey. onto the Gardevoir. No energy available from Psychic Embrace because Flutter Wings yeah. or Midnight Fluttering does deny Gardevoir EX's ability. So if Natalie's going to make a comeback, it this is how. Yeah, Kato getting stuck with the Gardevoir does decide to wow. play the A spec that on first stamp will give Kato two cards now instead of the one from Iono. But I guess Natalie really values having those extra resources right yeah. now. Five extra cards, so huge. Yeah, five cards to the hand here for Natalie. Getting the green stamp. Kato's going to get that red stamp here. But really, it's the green stamp on this side, an additional card to the hand. Although we didn't see what the card was even off the Iono. So who knows? Maybe it wasn't that great anyway. <laughs> yep. Now we're going to have some more options here. This is the five-card hand for Natalie Miller now. Natalie did find the energy to attack with Fluttermane, that Hex Girl, 90 damage to the active, two damage counters, somewhere else you need them. Let's see what Kato got. Two cards in hand, one more top deck. Can Kato retreat? There's an Iono, there's a Gardevoir EX, and there's an Unfair Stamp, which doesn't work right now. Iono only yeah. gives you one extra card. Um, Kirlia does have that refinement ability, which he's not going to use. What? Yeah. Oh. Well, what's okay? So Gardevoir EX, the, he can evolve, power up the Gardevoir EX, and then he can retreat. But right now there isn't a single Pokemon that Kato can use to take a knockout. All right. I mean, I guess with the transfer of the damage counters, he could get out a KO somehow. Either way, Natalie scoops, and we have Kato advancing to top four. Wow, that was incredible. 2-0 here in our top eight match. Kato Ari is going to advance into our top four at the North America International.